This is our message. This is who we preach. Christ died upon the cross. He was buried and he rose again with all power in his mighty hand. This is the good news of God concerning his son. I saw your upon the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest so he did something about it in the next chapter here we see that he called to himself the disciples and he anointed them and sent them forth he realized when he operated with the limitations of humanity he knew that that wasn't sufficient and so he took and he anointed 12 others and he dispersed them. Luke tells us that beyond the 12, that still wasn't sufficient. The Bible says, and the Lord anointed other 70. Everybody with me? He looked upon the masses. He looked upon the multitude. And God's heart throbbed of compassion because he wanted to heal them. Are you with me? He was saying there is a need for more of the Jesus ministry. He was saying there is a need for more of my followers to copy what I have been doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it is the time where God, he was talking to me about the compassion and putting upon my heart, uh, there's more that I want from you. There's more that I want from you. Oh, people are hurting, they're hurting, they're bruising, they're battered, and they're being exposed and exploited by many different things. And it's like he said, I want more from you. Want more of my compassion displayed that people might know that I really care. God said in the Old Testament to Moses, he said, Moses, I've seen, I've surely seen the afflictions of my people. And I've come down to help them. Moses said, what you going to do? He said, I'm sending you. You don't know how God may be responding to the needs at this hour. But as we are sensitive to God, he wants to get our full undivided attention and say, I'm putting in you and I have put in you uh, my spirit and my life. Um, hallelujah. And my gifts and my anointing um, because I want to show the compassion that I have for hurting humanity. They are like sheep having no shepherd. So there is room. Look at somebody say, there is room for all of us to work in the vineyard of our God. Hallelujah. There's much room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, so now he said, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers. I hope it stirs you like it stirred my heart. Oh, there's so much work to be done. Hallelujah. When we take on his values, are you hearing me? And we take on his commit, our commitment for his cause, are you with me? It'll move you to do something about it. And this is what God wants. To move us into the action. But I want you to know that for us individually. 
God says, I'm going to do something about your situation. Because I have compassion. I've seen these people were, hallelujah, subject to demonis, demonic activity. They were subject politically. They bore the burdens of heavy taxes, servitude, and human right violation. Sound familiar? They, the religious teachers were not providing or teaching, providing the kind of teaching that would help them. And then the pastor care and help for their material lives and their needs was not met. They endured also leprosy, fevers, chronic illnesses, demon possession, blindness, paralysis, and many other troubles. Jesus knew, but he responded with compassion. I am so amazed that somebody as mighty and as important as Jesus. Can I throw a little tidbit in here? The less important we feel, the easier it is to respond to human suffering. I looked at this, and somebody said, Jesus here, so and so and so, this is my, my daughter's got a problem here. Jesus says, I will come and heal her. This is the Lord from heaven. And I thought about myself, good God. Sometime, I don't know, to be willing like that. But thank God he's working on me. <laughs> but every one of those situations that I read, here he was. I'll come and help. I'll come and heal. They say, do so. He just got right up. Look at the humility. Look at the love that he has. Look at the compassion of Jesus. So he needs, he said, pray to the Lord of harvest that you have. Raise up more Jesus kind of ministry. Isn't that right? Ah, pastors, if you're like me, this is good for you. But God is like he's saying, don't, you know, no, don't get too important. That human needs, you're overlooking them. If it was, if Jesus could meet the needs of the common man, it tells, it tells us. And he's a bishop, isn't that right? He's a great apostle, isn't that right? I, I, I'm like the preacher said on yesterday, that was for me. But God is crying out and saying, I'm, I'm, I've anointed you now. And I have compassion upon the hurting ones. Yeah, I'm giving them my word that I might straighten things out for them. But now I want the compassion to embrace them. Deliver them. Somebody going to get delivered today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus responded with compassion. We need an integrated approach that fully meets the needs of people that are hurting and harassed. But this work needs prayer. Isn't that right? I can't, it's just not the, something that we out of our human effort can do, right? It takes God. It takes the Holy Ghost, somebody. Hallelujah, that can meet people's need. Isn't that right? I, I marvel at uh, how, from what statistics say, how far we are from the gospel being preached to all the world. With all of our technology today. And then Paul said, the gospel had been preached to all the then known world during his day. What was the difference? They didn't have the technology. They relied on the Holy Ghost. That was the difference. If we begin to rely more on the Holy Ghost than all this stuff that we're trying to put together, we'll reach more people. Philip was preaching somewhere and the Holy Ghost caught him up. 
sent him down to somebody else. He got saved, went on back to his place, and no doubt preached the gospel. Isn't that right? The Holy Ghost's strategy is so awesome. He can get the job done, but we got to listen first. Isn't that right? And then respond to what he said. Come on, let's give God some praise. He's a good God. You have to rely upon the Holy Spirit. That need is great. And it's a need so great that we and ourselves cannot meet. But he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll raise up laborers. And when you pray, when you pray, God, send somebody to Asia and Europe. Send somebody to Central America. Send somebody to Haiti. Send somebody, Lord, to Florida. Send somebody to California where things. Send somebody. When you pray that prayer, you must be willing to go yourself. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? I heard somebody say, well, I ain't going to pray that prayer. <laughs> but we must be willing. Because he just may say, well, I want to send you. Isn't that right? He may say that. You know, we, the Bible says in Revelation, they love not their lives unto death. Wow. So he responded with compassion. Jesus sees the need. And I believe in my heart that he was telling me about, I said, Lord, what do you want to do today? God says, I want to heal. I want to deliver. I said, God, what do you want to do? What do you want to deliver? And he began to talk to me about what he wanted to do. So I, I said, you know what? I'm just going to agree with you. If this is what you want to do, then you have your way. Isn't that good enough? Hallelujah. If he can't be Lord in the sanctuary, what good is our service? Isn't that right? Come on, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And then he preached the gospel. Look at verse 35. Jesus went about all, Galilee, all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel is the good news of God concerning his son, Jesus Christ. It is in the preaching of the gospel that the power of God is displayed. It is not preaching certain things that we enjoy. It is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block to the Greeks foolishness but to them that believe Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God I'm not ashamed of the gospel he said because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe isn't that right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This does not grow old. This is not elementary. This is our message. This is who we preach. Christ died upon the cross. He was buried and he rose again with all power in his mighty hand. This is the good news of God concerning his son. Hallelujah. And this is a time of jubilee. And God said, I will restore all things. Hallelujah. And this age of jubilee is the time when God has appointed to bring humanity out of the guttermost to the uttermost by his power and by his mighty spirit. 
It is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, that men might be saved. It is the display of the power of the kingdom of the almighty God uh, that men must hear and be delivered by the divine power of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is not plans. It is not programs. It is God. It is the power of God through the foolishness of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it. Because I preached it. And as I preached it, I saw lives change. I saw the power display. I saw lame people walk. I saw blind eyes come open as I preached Christ and as I preached the gospel. Things beyond my understanding. I saw miracles. I saw signs. I saw wonders. As I preached Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ. Foolishness to the Greeks or to the Jews. Hallelujah. But it is the power of God. To save humanity. God says. Christ died. For our sins. And if there's. If you're listening to me today. And you're trying. To be good enough. To come into God's kingdom. Stop it. Believe. The good news. And you can be saved. God will wipe your slate clean. Hallelujah. He'll cleanse you from head to toe. He'll change you. He'll put his spirit in you. He'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. He'll forgive you of all of your sins, iniquities, and transgressions. And you'll know that there's been a change. If you only believe in the good news of Jesus. Hallelujah. God did not send his son. Into the world. Oh glory. Mm. To condemn the world. But that the world through him. Might be saved. He's a savior. He's a rescuer. He's a deliverer. Hallelujah. The songwriter says. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and, and from the waters he lifted me. And now safe am I. Ah, it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that will save thy men and women. God is a savior. And he said it's through preaching the gospel that the signs and the wonders will be wrought. Hallelujah. God working with them, confirming his word with signs following. Ah, who will go to work for him today? Who will go and work for him today? There's a little song that says, My house is full. My house is full. And I think he said, My tables, I can't remember how that goes. And he said, Who will go? Oh, the fields are empty. That's right. Who will go and work for me today? Ah, who will go? And it's like he was reminding me again, we're called out of darkness into light and into service. Somebody say service. This is what we're called to. You say, well, now I know the pastor, pastor, and the deacons and, and the elders, they, they need to be, you no. Know, we all are called to service. Isn't that right? Called to service. Remember in the book of Acts, the whole church went everywhere preaching. 
Say, wait, 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 wait. No, there ain't nobody supposed to be preaching but the apostles. No. The whole church, they were scattered, preaching the gospel. Signs following the whole body. My God. Ananias, just ordinary man, laid hands on a man he became seeing. He was blind. Paul, ordinary people. God don't, he, he needs just ordinary people. Oh, my. He just need ordinary people. He don't need people that are just excellent in all of their doings and their, their expertise and wisdom. He doesn't need that kind. He needs people that are ordinary, that can hear the voice of the Savior and respond so that he will get the glory and not mortal flesh. Isn't that right? Uh, when you've been down so low and you couldn't lift yourself up, God picks you up. You give him the proper glory. Isn't that right? You don't take no credit for what you couldn't do. And that's the way it is. God takes us low. Then he might lift us, lift us up. That he might be glorified. Ah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who will go? Who will do service for him? What well, the Lord wants of you and I is to, be, to move from inward focus to outward focus. Everybody hear me? This is what he's saying. You say, well, what is God saying? He's saying, move from inward focus to outward focus. Move from selfishness to unselfishness. Did you know the spirit that you have is an unselfish spirit? We have the spirit of God. And so God is that way. And so he's wanting to have compassion. And today, he will show his compassion to you and I in the things that he do. He said, Lord, what do you want to do today? He says, there's healing for the sick and diseased. What do you want to heal, Lord? He said, inflammation of the joints. Arthritis. Are you out there? Do you hear me by way of TV? Are you suffering from arthritis? Do me a favor and don't call it your arthritis. Because if you want it, you can keep it. Isn't that right? Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. God can't take from us what we don't want to give up. Isn't that right? It's mine. But God wants to heal inflammation of the joints, he said. Then he said, I want to heal body aches and pain. Anybody familiar with body aches and pain? Anybody familiar with body aches and pain? Are you hearing me out there? If you're listening to this, then God want to heal you of body aches and pain. You know, you feel aches and pains in your body. You attribute it to just the body just worn down. But God want to heal you. That's what he said. I'm saying what he said. I believe God. I believe him. And then he said, I want to heal heart muscle. Some people's hearts has gone very weak. It's called in difficulties. The organ is not pumping with strength blood so it's causing seemingly heart failure but God want to strengthen and heal the heart muscle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm seeing what he gave to me and I'm going to allow him to do it just like he want to do it because he's able to back up what he's saying. If he says it. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Come on, let's start praising the Lord for his goodness. I love you, Jesus. I love you for your goodness. I love you because of your compassion. That those of you who've been suffering arthritis, inflammation of the joints, and your heart's weak, many of them, you're tired, so tired. 
But if you will receive today, God's going to heal your heart muscle, that organ. You're going to heal and you're going to take away aches and pains. You say, boy, you're speaking bold. I'm speaking only what he said. He's responsible for the things that he gives to me. And he's God enough to do it. Hallelujah. And then he went on to say this. He said, I want to deliver. I didn't say what you want. I changed it and said, what you're going to do? Because God always wants to help us, right? I said, Lord, what you're going to do? And that's what he gave me, these things. He said, heal from anger, deliver from anger. I'm going to heal from unforgiveness. And I'm going to heal from fear. Isn't that good news? I think we ought to just start thanking him. Let's thank him together. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank you, Lord. Join me in prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I've delivered what you gave me. I proclaim the good news, Lord God, to the TV audience and to your people. And I thank you for the gospel is your power to save humanity, to heal and deliver. Oh God, we give you praise and honor right now. Glory to God. Let's thank him. Let's just begin to thank him now. If you're suffering from any one of these things that we mentioned, I want you to just start thanking him in anticipation for help, okay, from God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, stand with me, if you will. Let's just begin to praise him. Father, we thank you right now. We want to honor you, Lord God, for all of your goodness and your grace. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord, for the gospel of Jesus to heal the broken heart, to set free, Lord, the captives that's been taken by the enemy. Oh, God, it is well. Send now the precious anointing. Set people free now. Every praise and glory. Oh, yes, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Glory, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the Father 